Heya, uh, for starters, I'd just like to say thanks a lot for giving this video a watch. This will be my first ever major video, and I hope it's very insightful. So the fact that you not only stumbled upon this guide, but also decided to give it a watch is something that I'm very grateful for. Like I said, this is not only my first ever video, but my first ever guide on top of that. So I hope that I can do my best to clearly teach your Brigitte as much as I possibly can. Due to that, I like to apologize that the quality here and there of the video isn't as high as I like it to be at times, but the guide portion itself should be sound. I originally decided on making this guide in response to the other guides that I saw from other players, such as Holy Shift Kid and Awkward. While I did agree with a few things here and there, I mostly just disagreed with Awkward's approach on Brigitte and his focus entirely on Inspire. I also had a different flowchart compared to Holy Shift Kid's Disrupt, Distract, Destroy, that being Distract, Delay, and Defend for myself. Keep in mind, this is by no means saying they are bad players. In fact, I want to really stress that they are very skilled players in their own right, and the things that I say is just my differing opinion. I'd also definitely recommend giving those guides a watch if you're able to as well, so I'll be linking them in the description for you to check out yourself. So credit for them for inspiring me to make this video. The goal of this video should deepen and widen your view of Brigitte, as in this guide I will go through essentially everything I know about this character as a grandmaster of Brigitte One Trick Pony. I will cover how to play her, her neutral, positioning, matchups, strategies, tips, and various other ways to step up your Brig game and carry you and your team to Grandmaster as well. So with all that out of the way, let's get right into the first part of Brigitte. So first things first, let's go over Brigitte's basic kit, and I mean the very basics. Normally I let you know how much damage certain things do, but because I'd rather you get into the habit of just doing the right thing instead of padding out numbers and stats, I'll instead let you know about damage and numbers only when it is utterly important. With Brigitte, carrying games revolves almost entirely about making the right plays, so don't focus entirely on damage just for damage sake. Brigitte's offensive kit consists of Flail, Whipshot, Shield, and Shield Bash. Starting with Brigitte's Flail, her Flail consists of Brigitte swinging her mace to the enemy's face. This is how you will primarily be doing damage, but keep in mind Brigitte is not a Reinhardt, and if you try to brawl like one, she will die a very painful and sad death. She only has 200 HP, 50 of which consist of armor. Therefore, being alive and staying alive as Brigitte will tremendously carry your games. Think of Flail mostly as a simple but constant source of DPS that you can always pressure the enemy with if they are nearby. Moving on to Whipshot, Whipshot has a 4 second cooldown and consists of Brigitte turning her mace into a long whip to hit enemies who are about medium range away from her. Whipshot also has a very crucial and important element of knocking back enemies that it hits. Whipshot is also her only way of more or less applying pressure from a relatively safe distance, and it's extremely important that you're able to land these whipshots consistently. After all, if you're unable to land whipshots, you're unable to apply pressure from a distance, and that seriously will make or break you as a brick player, so please keep that in mind. To really practice your whipshot aim, I recommend an amazing brig trainer that has tons of practice scenarios, including whipshot target practice. The code will be on the screen and in the description, so go ahead and check it out if you'd like. Trust me, it's really worth it. Next up, she holds out a shield in front of her that has 200 HP and regenerates HP only when it is not deployed after 2 seconds. Her shield is simply put, well, just a shield. However, don't think of it as just a shield. Think of it as a tool, and expanding your idea of what a shield is and what it can do will genuinely make you climb the ranks. I like to stress that Brigitte's shield is highly valuable, and while I'll go on to more later on, I want to emphasize just how important her shield is to her kit right now. But like I said, since we are just going over her overall kit, this is as much as I will be saying for now. Lastly, with her shield deployed, she can perform a shield bash, which is essentially just a very fast dash in the horizontal direction Brigitte is looking at. If shield bash hits an enemy, they get dealt damage on top of a very slight knockback. Shield bash has a cooldown of 5 seconds, and just like with her shield, knowing how to use shield bash is crucial to really understanding Brigitte. One thing I'd like to point out though, is that if you jump right at the end of your shield bash, you'll get some momentum from your bash and you'll go a bit farther than if you didn't jump in the first place. So get into the habit of jumping sometimes. Like I said earlier, Brigitte isn't a tank. Don't use your shield bash too aggressively in front of someone. 
You and your shield will get melted, so I find that I often use Shield Bash for movement purposes to bash away from someone or to get to the work quicker. So with all those things out of the way, let's go over how Brigitte can support her team since she is, well, you know, a support after all. Brigitte has two ways of healing her team, firstly with Inspire, and secondly with her repair paths. Fire is activated when you deal damage to enemies, and it is a very large area of effect around Brigitte that heals her teammates for 15 health per second over the time span of 6 seconds. Keep in mind though, teammates can only be healed by Inspire if they have a line of sight with you. So if you see your teammates, and they can see you, anytime you'll damage the enemy, they will be healed by Inspire. This is a very large mistake a lot of Brig players will do, as even in Awkward Scud, he will proc Inspire just to proc Inspire, but fail to realize that Inspire cannot go through walls. This essentially means he wastes a whip shot and has it on cooldown for basically no real value or healing to his team, despite him saying, look at me guys, I have 70% uptime. He will say that despite not realizing that half of that Inspire uptime is actually useless and is just padding out stats. Going back to the example of Awkward's Guide, take a look at this clip here. He focuses so much on Inspire that he does damage just for damage sake, and as a result he fails to keep in mind that his Genji needs healing, on top of ignoring a ball that he clearly sees, but decides to just turn around and fish for more useless Inspire just to pad out his stats. We are to win a teamfight, but besides, you can capitalize on isolate target and do a bunch of things. So what am I gonna do? Get my Inspire up first. How? By flailing, by using my whip shot. I simply bring this clip up because it's a literal first match and within seconds of him saying to only focus on Inspire, his teammate dies and there's a ball rolling around in his backline. He always has a mentality that his teammate's deaths are his own fault and here this is no different. Especially in higher ranks such as Grandmaster, starting a fight 4v5 is statistically a loss. On top of that, if he was actually fighting against a Grandmaster ball, letting a Grandmaster ball roll around uncontested, that would cost him the game. While he does still win, these mistakes don't get punished as hard because he's currently in a very low elo game. If this scenario was in a Grandmaster lobby, these mistakes would be hard punished. Keep in mind, Inspire only heals for 15 health per second. In the grand scheme of things, Inspire's healing cannot really heal through much. While Inspire is very important to Brig, Inspire is not at all a priority. Again, Inspire is not a priority. Let me say this one more time just to really emphasize it, okay? Inspire is not your priority. Do not focus on Inspire. If you have to actively think, oh my gosh, I need to get Inspire up, you're playing Brig incorrectly. Instead, think of Inspire as a reward for doing the right thing. Inspire should come naturally and fluidly when playing Brig if you make the right decisions. For example, did you apply pressure to the enemy with your flail? Congratulations, Inspire is your reward. Or did you use a whipshot to boop away a crucial target to get them out of position? Congratulations, Inspire is your reward. Reshaping your mentality from focusing on Inspire to instead focusing on being rewarded with Inspire will greatly improve your gameplay and tremendously change your view of how to play her for the better. Staying alive so you can make the right place to be rewarded with Inspire will seriously carry you and your team. Moving on to Brigitte's second way of healing, she has three repair packs and when thrown onto a teammate of her choice, that teammate will first be healed with a small burst of 25 immediate HP followed by 100 HP over the course of 2 seconds. Individual repair packs have a cooldown of 6 seconds, but there's virtually no real cooldown between throwing another repair pack. Also, throwing two or more health packs does not heal more than one. They just heal for longer. So despite the fact that people always seem to focus on Inspire, Brigitte's repair packs are actually where I believe the brunt of her healing will come from, and just like with understanding Inspire, understand how to properly use and manage repair packs will go a long way for your team. While it's tempting to just use them to heal anyone at any given chance, they have a somewhat punishing cooldown so don't throw them out like candy. Instead, throw them out when they absolutely matter, but we will go more into that later. Lastly, her ultimate, Rally, does a lot of things for her team both offensively and defensively. Rally gives Brigitte a huge burst of 100 armor for herself, and just like with Inspire, her ultimate provides 30 over health per second for any nearby teammates. Rally also not only gives a small speed boost to Brigitte, but also greatly increases Brigitte's shield size and health, as well as allowing Brigitte to stun any enemy she hits with her shield bash. 
The thing about her ultimate is that it's a unique support ultimate due to the fact that unlike other support ultimates like Lucio's or Zenyatta's, where their value lies almost entirely in the overhealth or healing they provide, Brigitte's ultimate provides value more so in her utility. Due to this, it's also entirely fine to use Rally extremely selfishly in my opinion. I use it very selfishly to guarantee a pick or to shut down any important cooldowns with their stun. I actually rarely ever use it to save a teammate or for the overhealth itself. While Holy Shift Kid's motto is Disrupt, Distract, Destroy, my motto was Distract, Delay, and Defend. Firstly, I also want to stress that Brigitte is a very defensive hero. This is not to be confused with a passive hero or a healbot hero. She is a defensive hero and she is extremely strong with controlling and denying space on top of shutting down the enemy plays. I'd also prefer to consider Brigitte an enabler support more so than anything else. She is extremely capable of enabling her DPS to be aggressive while enabling your other support to do their job efficiently and safely. The three Ds, as I like to call it, distract, delay, and defend, really can help to try to make you make a play. As a general rule, try to see if you can do either of these three things to always be providing some sort of value to your team. First off, distracting is something that I find very useful for Brigitte to try to make a play. Remember when I said Brigitte shield is super important? Use Brig shield as a means of not only baiting the enemy team's attention to your shield instead of your teammates, but also use your shield to bait cooldowns and abilities as well. Make sure the enemy wastes their cooldowns in your shield so your team can have free reign with little pressure onto themselves. She can block pretty much every major ability with her shield and even some entire ultimates such as Tracer's Pulse Bomb or Rhine Shatter. Use her shield in a distracting or countering manner instead of something like a Reinhardt shield which is primarily just used for, well, shielding things for the team. Moving on to the second D, that being Delay, it's quite simply how it sounds. Usually this also involves using Whipshot to boop away the enemy. Let's say you have a situation where the enemy is pushing the payload. Even if you say boop the tank away and they move forwards again, over the course of an entire game those boops backwards will add up. It could be the difference between having to fight another fight, one of which you might not win. Using Whipshot to delay the enemy's attacks is very crucial to Briggs' defensive neutral. For example, take this clip here where the diva is just simply trying to take the high ground. This is a Grandmaster level lobby, and notice just how little value D.Va is getting. Every single time D.Va tries to get to the high ground and tries to take a good position, I will shot her away. She's forced back on the low ground, and then on top of that, she is also forced to use another important cooldown to get back on the high ground, which is a cooldown that she cannot use to further dive someone. Here's another clip from the same Grandmaster level lobby. This time, the enemy tank is now a Winston, and they're just simply trying to perform a dive. Notice how the Winston is just trying to be a dive character and dive, but he can't because I whipshot him back. This essentially means my entire team is more or less uncontested on the high ground, and it also forces out a very valuable cooldown on the Winston so he doesn't die, that being his bubble. Then he's forced to wait for both his dive and his bubble cooldown to come back. Lastly, since Brick is mostly a defensive hero, defense and defending are extremely important to her kit. There's a reason why people sometimes refer to Brick as a bodyguard, and it's because Brick can turn sometimes frail heroes such as Zenyatta or Anna into strong fortresses that cannot really be penetrated. For example, if there's a Genji, that Genji has to go through you first in order to get to your friendly squishy, and that will definitely allow your teammate to shake off some pressure and keep their abilities such as Anna need to use more offensively instead. Ideally, you'd want to trade either your attention or cooldowns for the enemies, so if the enemy Genji or Tracer or whoever is shooting at your shield instead of your teammate, that is value. If they're trying to fight you instead, that is value. If they waste cooldowns on your shield, that is value. Keeping your squishy safe in a relatively safe area that you control and defend is extremely important and will carry your games. Lastly, I want to go over how to use Briggs ultimate defensively. Since Brick provides some overhealth for a team, it can be used defensively to help your team if they get anteed or need some healing in some form or another. The original idea behind Brigitte's Rally is that she will use her increased shield to shield damage for her team so that her overhealth for her team can be built up. You can definitely use it like this for sure, but I rarely ever use it defensively just solely for that reason alone. 
The main reason I use it is primarily due to her stun, since stun can shut down extremely powerful abilities and even some ultimates. Don't throw out a stun just to throw out a stun. Again, I see this a lot with other players, and this is something I saw especially in Awkward's Unranked GM guide. Having the option to just stun extremely valuable ultimates for 10 whole seconds means that even if the enemy knows that you're using Rally to stun them and they don't use their ultimate in return, that's them holding off for 10 whole seconds. And 10 whole seconds can be the difference between an entire team fight or a team loss. However, since you have the ultimate advantage, you have the advantage in that scenario because you have ultimates in use and they don't. Using stun for more than just, oh, let me stun, just a stun, is genuinely one of the easiest ways to win team fights with your ultimate. While there's nothing wrong with just stunning if you have no other reason to, try to use stun to stun some powerful cooldowns or abilities. Use it to shut down enemy Genjis, use it to stop Hanzo ultimates, or use it in particular to stop Junker Queen ultimates.